Spectrum wants to hear your views. You can SMS at any time during the show. Type Spectrum, leave a space, type in your contribution and name, then send it to 7197. Your views, our interviews on Spectrum, Radio 1, FM 90. A very warm welcome. This is Spectrum on Radio 1. I'm your host, Edmond Chesito. On Spectrum tonight, the findings of the Public Accounts Committee inquiry into the botched government compensation saga. How big is this scam? Also, how will Parliament react to the report? Last week, the, Parliament, the Public Accounts Committee of Parliament tabled their report into the 270 billion compensation scam, making a number of revelations and key recommendations. The report implicates two government ministers, the Governor Bank of Uganda plus other public officials. Under the parliamentary procedure, the report will have to be debated and a final decision uh, will be taken by Parliament on each of their recommendations. Parliament's decision will determine the next course of action. Details of this probe have been in the public domain for some time now, although too much focus has been on how businessman, also head of the NRM Entrepreneurship League, Hassan Basaj Jabalaba, got a huge chunk of the 270 billion shillings. Contradictions have emerged about how much he actually got. With the Auditor General saying he got 142 billion shillings, some people have said 169 billion shillings. So tonight on Spectrum, we explore, apart from Basaja Valaba, what does the report say about other companies that partook of the billions? Also, who messed up the compensation process, causing the financial loss, and how is Parliament planning to salvage the lost funds? We shall also ask the question, will Parliament deliver justice, seeing how other reports were handled? Our guest tonight, Honorable Gerald Karuhanga, Youth MP for Western Uganda, also Chairman of the Uganda Chapter of the African Parliamentary Network Against Corruption and Lead Counsel of the Public Accounts Committee. You're most welcome, Honorable Karuhanga. Uh, thank you, Edmund, and uh, good evening, uh, listeners. Could you give us the substance of this report that you made? Yeah, um, the, the Public Accounts Committee indeed made a report to Parliament about uh, compensations of the two markets, uh, the, the two compensation cases actually, because the markets are more than two. Uh, the two companies that were involved is the Harbour Group of Companies and uh, the Rhino Group of Companies. Rhino is the Chiseka market case. Harbour Group involved the four markets, uh, that is uh, Nakasero market, uh, Shauriako market, or we know now called St. Valikudem market, and then the city square. So those for Harbour Group, which is the Basaja Baraba a case, we see a single company parting away with 142 billion in the form of compensation for just having obtained agreements or contracts to, to run these markets which were later cancelled. Just signing of these contracts. He never put any brick to construct anything, nothing. And he, it is very obvious from our report that you can see there was serious connivance with public officials, particularly that on the General's Chambers and the Ministry of Finance. They worked out a strategy, probably shared this money, and it happened. That was the case of Harbour Group and Basaja Baraba. The other case is Rhino. Rhino, uh, a company uh, owned by Kano Mujeni, gets uh, about, um, first it gets about uh, 6.8 uh, 6 billion, and then it appeals and asks for 8.1 billion. And the Attorney General, in the name of Professor Kid Makubuya, then, then, because then he was the Attorney General, sits alone in his office and grants this uh, uh, request. They, they, they appeal, not even reducing it. He say the man asked for 8.1 billion extra and put his signature, said, please pay. 8.1 uh, on top of the 6.8. Yes. And uh, so he passed, he goes home with 14.9 billion for also just entering into a contract with the KCC then to run a uh, second market. Now, it, you, 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 you see lots of, one, public officials, negligence, abuse of office, 
and and actually fraud and even connivance because there is no way a person can sit enter into a contract a few months later before even anything really serious takes place before any construction goes on you say this is the loss i have made a loss of 142 billion that's a lot of money in uganda actually today those would be over almost close to 70 kilometers of tarmac road it would probably be good enough money to pay teachers for some good time yes our doctors would not have to run to rwanda for better remuneration so but what happens we see that the president writes the ministers saying pay pay pay, 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 pay. however the president i think uh, trying to act a little smart he doesn't mention the sum throughout his letters and I, I, and I don't want to believe that the president didn't know about the figure that was supposed to be paid. Because you're saying pay, pay what? But in his well, you could tell them compute and then pay the man. The he was setting the principle, basically. You, you see, yes, that, that on one hand, that could be true. But on the other hand, that is not true. You know why? Because it, it wasn't one letter. There were six letters. And that was six letters. The president wrote six letters. Yes, and on one, one case. On one case. That's how. Why should the president write six letters? To the governor, to the minister of finance, to the attorney general, to Haba. You know, and then you keep wondering. When does the president get time to do other more urgent and serious matters? And then from there the ministers now come and say, for us the president directed us. But the president somehow jumps out of the, of the whole picture and says, but on several occasions I've even directed you in more straight terms and you've refused. And then he gave us six cases where he has directed them before and he said, but here you rushed quickly to pay. And he said, certainly you hid away from me the, the sum, the sum that was involved. That's what he says. We are yet to believe him. Because there was an appeal to the president, yes. which he forwarded to the attorney general. In the appeal, there is a sum. Indeed, this is why this sum, we get this sum of 142 billion. Yes. So how does he come and now tell us, okay, I don't know, but okay. Now let's assume it is true. These ministers also had a duty, the same Mr. President. Yes, it's too high. Yes, it's too high. But we also find something very dramatic. On all these occasions, these ministers never replied to the President. Not, not at all in writing? Not at all in writing. On the six letters? Yes. So what they did, get the letters, act, and, uh, and use the letters actually to achieve also a given end. Now, what disappointed us, of course, m mostly was uh, the last letter which came from the president. Fortunately, it came when we had closed the collection of evidence. He brings a letter saying, you know, I talked to the to, to Jawaraba, to the Attorney General then, Professor Kidumakubuya, uh, to Honorable Saida Bumba, and uh, from what they told me, I think it was a fair payment. 169 billion in Yes. Million. Now... Oh, no, we keep then at the end he says, but if there was anything that was uh, over and above what they were they deserved, the auditor general should guide us and they should refund this money. Now we wonder, you are saying it is fair on one side. On the other hand, you are saying, and he says by copy of this letter, the auditor general, he should do, uh, he, should, he should investigate and find out the, 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 the amount that was not due to have a group of companies and should be paid back. Now we say, what was the effect of that letter? And then, of course, it, it caught headlines uh, in the media. The newspaper. And then he comes out to say, no, I have not changed my position. Then the press secretary is saying, yes, the money was fair. The amount was fair. So we, what's the confusion? Why all this? You know, at times, when you, you have uh, no reason to believe that something is wrong, then, then, then you, you see, the, the, you know, in law there is what you call demeanor. Yes. If you are before a judge, yes, and he sees you, Looks you if you panic, yeah, you are panicking and you are biting your lips. You you are, you can't see the judge straight in the eyes. You know that something. He wrong. knows that something is wrong. Right. So we also see the behavior here. All right. Very suspicious. Okay. Very suspicious. Uh, Honorable Karuhanga, uh, maybe listeners, this is Spectrum on Radio and tonight the findings of the Public Accounts Committee inquiry into the Bosch government compensation saga. How big?
big is this scam and how will Parliament react to this report? Our guest is Honorable Gerard Karanga, Youth MP for Western Uganda. He's also lead counsel of the Public Accounts Committee, which carried out this investigation, and chairman of the Uganda chapter of the African Parliamentary Network Against Corruption. You'll be able to contribute to this discussion. You'll call in at some stage. What is this a symptom of? What does it tell us about our systems, our governance? Yeah, disrespect of public institutions. Uh, because I think if uh, the Attorney General's chambers were empowered adequately, uh, probably some of the officers who are a little decent uh, could have acted otherwise. Uh, and then, of course, these ministers are extremely powerless. Uh, every order comes from state house. State house is like the clearance house. So unless something... Oh, it's not a clearing house. The last clearing house we had in state house was during Benaisa's time. Well, well, uh, apparently every other, even when the border border is on strike, you see a letter from state house. If the hawkers are on the street and they get money, you see an order from state house. Only, but the chapati sellers have not gone to state house, so you can't say it's a clearing house. So I, I should we wait also for the chapati sellers to, to proceed to state house? I mean, honestly, it's not fair to Ugandans that you, you can single-handedly run a country. It is not possible. Uh, and this tells us about to what has happened to our institutions. You see, in the, even when uh, President Museveni's regime leaves us, leaves uh, government, we are going to have a lot of difficulty because these institutions have been completely almost washed away. So you basically have to begin almost afresh. The police finished almost. You go to now, honestly, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to seriously respect the judiciary. But when you see, particularly the junior officers, they, they, it's almost also finished. Because, again, you see corruption really biting. Now, this has not come out to, it hasn't really happened accidentally. No, it has been by design and orchestrated properly by the serving regime. Because, look, you have, you have uh, three arms of government. The legislature, the judiciary, and the executive. Yes. Now, every time the judiciary or the legislature is not actually even if forget about total agreement, but is it, there is a, a little di uh, diversion of, of, of opinion. Yes. The executive comes out to, to bash and brush off, and probably actually want to wash it away completely. The other two arms. Now, the, certainly that has a significant impact. Because it goes as far as even, it, it, it has an implication, even the officer who sits down to draw the budget, he has those feelings of the executive about the given institutions. Right. So, and you go, along the way they get weaker and weaker. And that's why we say, well, where is the separation of powers? All right, let's go a little bit back, uh, back, let's, 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 let's move a little bit back, uh, upstream in this matter we've looked at the symptoms the effect and the you know the runner let's talk about the actual genesis of it these men wake up is it something they planned ostensibly knowing the end let's get these markets let's get these parks and then eventually the government will take them back and then will ask for compensation do you think there was that level of complexity no in I, I, I think um, Basaja Barba had an interest in running the markets um, and uh, it was a very, very lucrative. It, it would have been a very lucrative business for him. Yeah, for him, very, very lucrative. And um, so, unfortunately, he didn't, I think, anticipate what he made. So it was a shrewd, uh, and it, not, let, let's not even call him shrewd. He was a smart businessman who knew where the dollars were, the money was, and he went for it. I want to think that he was about to be a smart businessman. Yes. Because I don't think he eventually, because since he never attended, I don't think he's smart on that one. Um, so, so he saw an opportunity, an investment opportunity. That's very true. And he took, uh, he, 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 he took uh, the opportunity, he grabbed right. it. Now, unfortunately, you know, the, markets, uh, the market vendors riot. Yes. And then the president comes in. Now, when he comes in at this point and he says, no, we should, we should uh, take these markets back to the vendors, that's when now uh, these public officers connive with Basaja Baraba to actually make uh, make a lot of money, right. make a killing in there. Right. And uh, you can see it, you, you can see it. Uh, honestly, 142 billion for what? What is painful and what people must know is that there was, first of all, the president directed the Attorney General to constitute an interministerial committee 
flavor white this case. That's a very high level organ. Yes. And, the attorney, the the attorney, and he directs him that he should share it. The attorney general, to a reasonable magnitude, disregards this letter. He disregards the interministerial commission. Yeah, the, the president, well, the president's directive, and he goes, he picks on the the technical committee that had evaluated Rhino earlier. Yes. For the second market. Yes. Calls them very junior officers. Calls them and gives hands over these uh, these uh, uh, petitions of Haber. And then they sit and say, okay, we are going to award, we are awarding Haber 22.7 billion. Yes. That was still a lot of money. And uh, Haber appeals, Haber appeals, or Sierra appeals, and uh, the, the same technical committee sits and increases this amount to 54 billion. Yes. And they stop there and they go home. But along the, of course, the second sitting, the chairman of the of the of this committee also resigns. The, the then government chief valuer says, according to me, the 22.7 was, was fair. Was fair. So I can't. He resigns in prin on principle. He resigns on principle. Now, what happens after the 54? How does it jump to 96 and then eventually to 142? Yes. Uh, how about again rise back to the attorney general saying this is not adequate money? The Attorney General sits alone, applies his constitutional powers, and recommends that Haber should be paid 96 billion. Yes. Disregarding the, the, the second committee, committee. Yes, sitting and its recommendation. Now, he doesn't stop at that. Earlier, there is money they had recommended of this 54 billion, they had already recommended to the Minister of Finance to pay 46 billion. Yes. And he now comes to Parliament, no, no, sorry, not Parliament. He comes to, to, to the same Attorney General. This is now Basaja Barawa. He says, no, but this is not adequate. No, no, it's not adequate. But somehow, but I mean, it was honest, it was really too much. But what does he do? What does now the Attorney General do? He gets this 96 billion and adds 46 billion, which already they had directed. The Minister of Finance to pay. Yes. Because the Minister of Finance say, right saying, is this 46, is this 96 billion in addition to the 46 we've been processing or it is part of the 46? Yes. How the Attorney General reply saying, no, 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 no. Two different cases. Says this 46 pay, but there is another 96 also paid. Yes. Now, when we ask the Attorney General then, Professor Kid Makuya, what justification does he give for this other 46? Yes. Nangans is there. Now that's why the money becomes even over and above what was had Nangans, claimed. What, what did you say? Just Nangans, as in he doesn't. He's there, lost. <laughs> he is. Is that an English word? Yeah. Well, I don't think it's English, but I probably so he gone. Yeah. Um. So and it, it is painful because you are a, a, a professor of law, very highly respected citizen. And you, you sit in your office, use your constitutional powers to cause a loss of 142 billion to this country. Right. What, and then the, what is Saida Bubba's case in this? The Honorable. For her, when they write to the Minister of Finance to pay, the PS was not very comfortable with the figures. So he writes and says, uh, I, I, he writes to the Auditor General, but I think you need to verify this. This is, we've never had such a compensation list of this country. The Auditor General says, fine. He says, but uh, this is quite complex. I need to hire an independent firm. So they say, it's okay, you can hire it, we shall find the money. And then he proceeds to, to hire KPMG. Yes. And they pay KPMG. One of the big for global yes. accounting firms. KPMG is paid. It does the, the work thoroughly well. Now, a few weeks when they are just about to finish the report, just two weeks, the minister writes the Auditor General saying, um, should we proceed and pay? The Auditor General says, no, no, uh, just give me a few weeks, probably two, and I will be back, I will get back to you with a report before you can pay this. The one. KPMG report. Yes. The day the Auditor General wrote that letter saying, wait for the report. Money was paid. Money. The, that's when the Minister of Finance wrote the Governor about Said Abumba. Yes. It had to be paid at full speed. Yes. That was an emergency. Yes. And quickly, it was um, the Governor, or of course, with also some directives from the President, processed the payment. And, and the payment was also dramatic. 
Because how does he get the money? He doesn't go and repay him. No. What he say? He says I need I need I have bank debts. Right. So I need letters of comfort from Bank of Uganda. Yes. Give them to me and then I I can get money from these banks, clear my debts, and then when the government pays me, you clear you you you, you sort out yourselves. Right. And the governor writes the letters of comfort after all he had been elected by the president and the minister of finance. Yes. So when these letters mature, because they were irrevocable letters of comfort. Right. When they mature, Otherwise, a series of them, it wasn't one yes, letter, it, wasn't one it was letter. broken down. So the letters actually amounted to the magnitude of $46 million. And uh, that's how Pasajara ends up being paid lots of money. And he works from smart. Do we know what the KPMG report said? Yes. We How do, much did this one them paid? Him actually, <laughs> the most interesting thing was the KPMG report. Because for them, they said, look, this man owes money to government. First of all, they said they don't find any legal basis. And that is oh, they said there's no legal basis, there's for, paying no legal basis for paying this amount. It's not there. And indeed, it is not there because the constitution is clear. The constitutional court has pronounced. So legally, you're not supposed to get a pay. Nothing. Zero. So what the KPMG says? KPMG says that he should have been paid. 900 no no that you should pay 900 million to government of uganda for doing for what he owed some money kcc he had uh, i think he owed some yeah because he had not paid some money to 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 to, to kcc yes so that's the money he owed to government of uganda so kpmg for it says this man uh, this man actually owes money to government of uganda he said government pays him see instead of, yeah, instead of government paying him he should be paying 900 and they didn't do anything to this market even city square didn't plant even a single Nothing, flower not even a single flower where I could put it. So, and so we keep wondering, what justified the payment of 142 billion? Certain things make you think you're dreaming. But, you know, maybe it's an exciting time to be alive in our dear, beloved country. Listen, as this is Spectrum on Radio 1. Tonight, the findings of the public accounts inquiry into the Bosch government compensation saga. How big is this scam and how will Parliament react to this report? We're going for a break. We'll be back. Special fares to the U.S., London, China, and India with extra baggage allowance on selected flights. To book your flight, contact your local travel agent or call us on 041-7800-900 or book online at qatarairways.com slash UG. Qatar Airways, world's five-star airline. Terms and conditions apply. John, Mike and I, we go back a bit. We knew John at the beginning, working for someone else. But he was different. He had vision, saw opportunities. He started working towards his goal, opened his own garage and worked, learning the hard way. His reputation spread. Trust, consistency, quality. Soon people were coming to him from all parts. He made himself and his whole street prosper and also help friends seeing potential in people and helping them on. But John never shouts about all his success. He's just who he is. Special. So here's to men like John who make a difference, who enjoy Nile Special, the rich, satisfying taste from the sauce. Nile Special. You've earned it. Not for sale to persons under 18. Not for sale to persons under 18 years. Please drink responsibly. Spectrum on Radio 1 FM 90 is brought to you by Stanbic Bank. 
Welcome back on Spectrum tonight. The findings of the Public Accounts Committee inquiry into the botched government compensation saga. How big is this scam? Also, how would Parliament react to this report? Our guest is Honorable Gerard Karanga, Youth MP for Western Uganda, also Chairman of the Uganda Chapter of the African Parliamentary Network Against Corruption, and Lead Counsel of the Public Accounts Committee. You'll be able to call in and contribute to this discussion. What should happen? What can we expect to happen? Yeah, one is that we, we recommended that um, the Honorable Professor Kidu Makubuya uh, be censured, was sacked. The same for Honorable Saida Bumba. And um, equally, we also recommended the same for the governor. Uh, of course, uh, many people had different views about the governor, uh, considering that his was at the tail end and he, he only keeps money on behalf of you. you he doesn't it. own it. He doesn't own it. So, but. Um, you know, it was um, it, it was unbelievable. You, you just look at what was done, and you even wonder why people. First of all, forget about not fearing. At least have some little moral integrity, however small. Yeah, uh, but you, but I think it is the culture that is eating us. You see, these things don't happen from the blue. Now what no. culture? Culture of what? Of theft? Culture of theft, culture of corruption. You see, it has, it has become part of us that even when you are not corrupt, you are probably even more insecure, especially if you are in government. Because you think people are going to say, eh, this is the person who is going to probably. Let's throw him out. He's yes. going to report everyone. Yes, he's going to report everyone. Like uh, uh, the, 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 this, the, the Kenyan man, uh, it's our turn to eat. Who yes. has the word to spin the bill? Gisongo. Yeah, Gisongo. So, um, but it's, it's painful. It's really painful. For me, I grew up thinking that professors are the most honorable people you can respect and uh, probably go to for guidance uh, on all aspects. Forget about even uh, uh, their uh, academic um, uh, speciality, but also uh, in terms of, of guiding, in terms of morals, integrity. That's what I grew up thinking. And then, because Professor Kid Makubuya, I, I, I mean, when I was, I was squeezing him, squeezing, he would really look a little funny and say, my, my son, my, my student. And then I quickly remind him, I say, no, actually, you didn't teach me. You taught the people that taught me. <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah, and, and it was painful, honestly. And uh, you see a lot Indicting of that your own grandfather. In yes, post. you see a lot of dishonesty. You, uh, it was really very painful. Is there a chance of this money getting recovered? Because I mean, KPMG, which is a professional, it's one of the top four professional audit auditing companies in the world. Yeah. Price Waterhouse, Coopers, Ernst and Young, and uh, the fourth Delight one. Delight and Tush. Del and Tush. Mm -hmm. If they say there's no legal basis, and you know, legally they should, uh, Haber should not have got this money. Is it possible to recover all the money, 169 billion shillings? If the executive is serious about it. If the executive is serious, they can cut the losses and ask this man to vomit the money. Yeah, because is, he has... Are they going to do that? That's what I don't see actually happen because... Well, but uh, you are in parliament. You can tell them do this. You think they'll ignore it? On, on several occasions, including oil. The other day, you saw what the president did. It's just signed off the oil agreements irrespective of what parliament recommended. So, I think... I don't see the political will. Again, all of these things happen because there is no political will. Uh, if you have uh, a clean leadership and people are willing to take care of Ugandans and Ugandans' interests, then you'll certainly see a fundamental change, not just written on paper and uh, uh, campaign posters. So, but how does this happen? This happens when we Ugandans actually stand up and say this is what we want. You know, for me, I don't want to believe that the leaders we have are from nowhere. No, we can't just get the leaders we deserve. We must get the leaders we deserve. Yes. So if we sit back and say, oh, they bring money for doing campaigns and we give the money and vote them, then the following day we should be able to, to take the pain in. So, and, and that's where it goes. Why don't we, I think we need to really to begin educating our people. Yes. Campaigning and telling them, look, this money that they give you to vote for them, and tomorrow you sell for the next five years, probably 1,000, 2,000 shillings, is actually your money. It is money from what you paid as tax. Once they get that message, then we can have clean leadership. That's well, very possible. In Libya, when he heard about Tunisia and Egypt, Gaddafi said, I'll give you 24 billion shillings to build houses. They didn't listen to him. They drove him out of town. What do you think is going to happen in Parliament? Let's look at the next four weeks, four months. Yeah, well, I see Parliament uh, getting still more active as it has been, uh, probably getting even more active. 
And um, I see uh, serious cases. One, we have this report before us. We still have the UBC saga, or we have all those cases. Uh, there are also ministers involved in that. There are so many corruption scandals. I see Parliament actually really coming. You know out. the bicycle laws. You tried to buy bicycles from a man who deals in coconuts. Eventually, he died in a flat somewhere. I know, and 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 that's that's the saga we are talking about. Honestly, how? How do you steal money meant for 70,000 bicycles? You don't even deliver a carry of a single bicycle. They gave us 1%, I think. The last time we had the war in Mombasa, we don't know if they crossed the borders. That has been said for the last two months, remember? Mombasa and Kampala, meanwhile. Well, the buses came in less than a week. Exactly. So where are the bicycles? bicycles can't come. <laughs> and bicycles can't come. Probably I want to think buses are more bulky, have <laughs> much more bulky. Yeah. So, uh, and you, you just don't understand how this keeps on going. Uh, and we seem to be comfortable with it as Ugandans. Honorable Karuhang, you are an, inf an influential voice on corruption, mm. but you sound apathetic. You, it's like you've given up. You, you don't even have hope. And the United Parliament is, is vibrant. And you don't think there's hope for, of recovering this money. No, not, this is a signature not at all. If anything, I would want to really uh, I I invoke, invoke Ugandans and, and maybe also provoke them. That look, it is us who must come out and do this. Don't, they, don't leave it to Parliament alone, no? Because now let's talk about parliament. There are things you can do. What do you think is going to happen? These men will be fired, the man and the woman, or what? Yes, I think as parliament we can sack these two ministers. That one I believe. You can censure them. We can censure them. If, we, if the president cannot sack them, we shall certainly censure them. Uh, and I will honestly be very, very disappointed if the members of parliament don't really support us and censure these ministers. I will be so disheartened because, again, what shall we tell the people? And you don't expect this money to be recovered at all? I, w I pray that it is recovered. Is that a possibility but I don't see that in Parliament? Way. Well, Parliament can make a recommendation. Yes, and we did. And no, we did. I yes, we did make the recommendation. We did make the recommendation. The, the report was tabled on the floor of Parliament. But how many things has Parliament recommended? Well, but for the record, you could have it on the record. We did. Parliament uh, and did we this. did. And I'm sure Parliament will agree with us that this money should be recovered. But let's wait and see. Well, but what concern, what would concern many listeners is that Gerald Karuhanga, a renowned voice on, fearless voice on corruption, you're sounding apathetic. I don't sound apathetic, honestly. You sound like you've given up. There's a bigger power. I'm not about to give up. Uh, because, I mean, if you have to fight a, a, a war, then it has got to take many battles. So there, there are some battles that will get hotter. This is just the beginning. I am not about to give up. If anything, I'm, I am encouraging every young, every young person in this country to get up and realize that we constitute 70 percent of this nation and therefore if we chose to take charge we can get things changed that's the fact how can you do it? oh the first power that we have is the voting power 20, so, 2016 2016 yes 2016. are you talking about the by-elections including the by-elections i was very happy what there, happened there are many luero uh, in TV. and i had see more I, I don't think the ruling party will win any of those i, I don't why think. because of what is Prevailing, everyone realizes that indeed we have a corrupt regime. You're saying we have a corrupt regime? Yes. Why? A very, very corrupt regime. A few mistakes here and there in 25 years. Oh, come on. It can't be a mistake today, a mistake tomorrow, a mistake the other day. Then again, you are mistaken to be in the government. You see? <laughs> you probably want to go and graze cows or do something else. But because seriously. Or well, grow tomatoes in a swamp. <laughs> yeah, or something of the sort. Uh, no, it could be yams. So. It is, it, 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 it's, well, we can't be apathetic and we can't lose it. But how can we get, if, I mean, if you say it's a corruption, how can you change that? Yeah. Patriotism clubs, we have a desk in state house. <laughs> People should learn to love their country. You know, some of these things are so ironic. <laughs> it's, it's unbelievable. Uh, I, I don't want to go that road, but honestly, if you, do you know which has patriotism in this country? We know the husband of Kakumba Masiko okay. in state house. So now I think you... you uh, uh, it's a cul-de-sac in your view. It, it's it's we can't unfortunate. Uh, some of these things I think are jokes. They, they just, and you waste lots of time. You know, they get about 10 billion every year. I don't know for what. That oh. money would probably go to teachers. So, and it is in the budget, you tell them, say, oh, no, 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 teachers, we don't find any money in the budget for teachers. And you have all those big, big, big funds being wasted. All right, so let's look at Parliament again. This, this is put on the order paper, mm -hmm. and it's debated. When can we expect that to happen? Tomorrow. Tomorrow you'll talk about this PAC report. Yes, tomorrow is when we get to this PAC report. And um, I, the members are very prepared. And by the way, very interesting uh, uh, scenario. The, most of the MPs already signed the censure motion 
for these two ministers, even before the PAC report is presented, right. once they have the facts on their fingertips. Yes. So I think it won't w take so long. So in matter of, it's a matter of time that these ministers yeah, will be so part of our history. That's kind of formality that we are going to read the report and people listen to the details. But I think it is not going to take a lot of time. So at least we shall have a little blood on the floor. Two ministers sent Yes, yes uh, this will be now an Easter gift. Uh, last time we, pro we promised a Christmas gift and you had it in form of Kawakumba. This time the, the, the Easter gift is going to be in form of two. The so, anti-corruption movement eight Kabakumba for for Christmas. Yeah. Now you're giving us two. You're making two. it bigger. Yes, and probably it will get. Uh, in fact, those who want to be ministers should begin really making the applications <laughs> uh, known and uh, probably sent to the president. Well, yeah. But if you censure two ministers, one was censured the, the last time, five were rejected. That's about nine posts. Because I should, I was likely to have a cabinet reshuffle. Chances are that you probably even see more by probably the. You post. think so? Yes, by close of this final. My gathers are clean. How do you censure someone? Oh, oh come on, you are yet to see some. I mean, there are some scandals. You know, the the case of uh, Carol Cruz. It has, it has, it has not closed. Oh, I'm very sure very soon you are going to hear about it. Again in UBC. Yes, UBC. So uh, I mean, this is for me. I think it's this is a tip. This is just the tip of the iceberg, uh, and we can just we don't. I don't know. Uh, when we met the president as a public accounts committee, I told him, Mr. President, look, you have all these corrupt ministers around you. One is that he, I, I don't know whether really this is on about the ministers, because I mean you can't also keep around people who are known to be public thieves. But I told him, look, why don't you actually sack all these fellows and appoint a new cabinet altogether? Why? Does he have evidence? Uh, that's what he said. He said, you see, uh, I can't uh, operate the He will be victimizing. I can't operate the but he has the evidence. He says his intelligence is very good. He normally gets the... even told uh, Rwandan President Kagame that he <laughs> has many, many, many fields. He didn't point any fingers. Well, let's hear from you, our listeners. This is Spectrum on Radio 1. Tonight, the findings of the explosive Public Accounts Committee inquiry into the Bosch government compensation. 169 billion shillings paid out. That's almost $70 million from a, well, a country that you thought was poor. Well, now you know. Or you should know better. You can call in our numbers 0414 348 111 0312 Spectrum, hello? Hello? Alright, don't be bashful. Please talk to us when you call in. Hello? Okay. Hello? You're live on Spectrum, my friend. Your name? There seems to be an issue with those lines. I think somebody's going to work on them, and then we'll be able to get you. Call. Yes, yeah. hello. Yes, sir. Your name? Yes, sir. Your name? You live on Spectrum, sir. Your name? Hello, Adrian. Yes, sir. Your name? You 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 live on Spectrum. Your name? I'm afraid I can't hear very well. You're live on air. Please go ahead. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much for the opportunity. My name is Ahmed. Yeah, I'd like to tell Jared Karahanga, honorable MP, that what you're doing is very honorable. But I'm wondering why, why as parliament, you cannot really move ahead and put a bill where all these ministers should actually, as soon as they are censored for corruption, large sum of money, like 142 billion, uh, being negligent in such sums. Why shouldn't you really go ahead and get all the property they have to try and recover the money to so set a precedent for anyone who will joke around with public funds? Thank you very much. <laughs> Spectrum, hello? All right, I'll read down the numbers again. 0414-348111-0312-260390-0312-261390. Spectrum, hello? Hello? Yes, sir, your name? Nick is my name. How, come again? Nick is my name. Nick, yes, go on, Nick. How are you? Very well, thank you. Good. Uh, first, as uh, the previous quarter has said, I think for every right-thinking Ugandan should give support to Honare Karhanga. And uh, I think it's time for Ugandans to get annoyed and ask why. As why are things happening, and then why should we remain in the same state of political quagmire? I think uh, President Museven has also to reinvent himself. You know, it, time may be up, but how you go is also a question. I think he should shed off all the dirt around himself, because a, a person can repent at any time. 
It was quite ironical and touching recently when President Museven was receiving the Chinese delegation and only to see somebody on his side who was Kaba Kumba, who had recently been censured as clearly a fraudulent minister. That is the that is the face the president was portraying to the Chinese investors that this is a trustable person. I think Ugandans have had enough. We only need to get to, to our fences and clean up for the better future of our parents and the next generation. Spectrum, hello. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Can you switch off your radio? Spectrum, hello. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Hello. Your name? Hello. Hello. You like you like for the program. I thank Honorable Karuhanga. Karuhanga, your name? For the comments. And I would like to ask him uh, to comment about the hundred and three million they were given. Were they on credit or on given? Thank you very much. Spectrum, hello. Yes. Good hello. Good evening, Mr. Edmond. Good evening. Your name? I'm A. M. As usual. Yes. Thank you for hosting Honorable Honorable Karuhanga, yeah. the youth MP. Uh, I want to salute him as he's executing his parliamentary work of PAC. But on the same t on the same side, I want also to accuse him. Uh, he, he forwarded documents which were for, which was found out that were false against our Prime Minister, uh, Honorable Amama Mbabazi. What is this comment? And another issue, Kisto, you mentioned about the present meeting with the President of Rwanda, saying that you know Uganda they are thieves. It's true. Ugandans are thieves. So we, we can't we can rule really it out that President Seven is working with people who are, their morals are not good. Spectrum, hello. Hello. Okay, let's get back to this. the Honorable Karuhang. Mm. Um, uh, well, thank, thank you for the, the, the callers who actually appreciated the work we are doing. Um, now, let me talk about the 103 million for the vehicles. Yes. First of all, I was... You unite in agreement, but you can't unite against uh, corruption. No, you unite for no. the, to get the vehicles, but you can't unite against corruption. No. I, first of all, I was very, very uh, disturbed that we spent our first weeks of parliament discussing our remuneration uh, and emoluments generally. I, I, well, that's I, housekeeping. I, 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 was, I, I just couldn't believe it. Then two, so eventually the issue of vehicles was mentioned. So I thought it would pass because nobody really, we never agreed on anything. So and the money came eventually. And I was like, okay, we were here saying there is no money for teachers in the budget. Very clearly. Even went to NTV. Yes. And scrutinized the budget. You got and zero for the zero. And I said, well, then where does this money come from? God works in miraculous ways. And each one of us is given 103 million. We are 370. So you've actually got the money? Yes, I did. Go on. And so I. I, 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 I <laughs> I'm never thinking so that they should have given you 300. No, no. Yeah, because okay. we'll break down. <laughs> so I, 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 I just never understood it. But what, what, what do we do? Personally, I've, I've already made it clear. I'm going to use this money to buy an ambulance and buy an ambulance for one particular hospital, which I think it could be one of the most dilapidated hospitals. That is Chiriandongo Hospital. But you have a wide constituency. Yes. Is it 16? So, and they also buy uh, maybe about 500 mattresses and distribute them across the, 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 the health centers that are in the region. But that, that, that is not here. Probably what I would want to achieve. I would want to ask all of these MPs to, do, to the do the same. And I would not, I want to be very clear on this. I would not want a single member of parliament to take this money back to government. Yes. Because we are saying these fellows are corrupt, that every coin they can run on there, if they have a, an opportunity, they will steal. So since we already have this money with us, let's take it to the police. Are you sure the money is in your bank? I'm very the parliamentary commission I'm says nobody has got any money. No, come they're on. telling lies. I, I I don't want to think they said so because they should go to church and repent. Well, the parliamentary commission said. Yeah, it. because the truth is we got this money. So all of you. A majority. I, I, I don't want to. I I, I can't at be you certain. I, at least I got my 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 part of it. Now this and yet you couldn't find money for teachers. That's an that's that's what really shocked me. You went to Entebbe, a group of MPs went to Entebbe, and they looked at the budget and they said, "No, we've done our best. There's no money, no extra money, nowhere to cut." Of course, the the budget committee that went to Entebbe was extremely embarrassing because we had already indicated to them over 260 billion already, which was in wastage budgeting. 
And then they came with us. And they said, we week later and said they couldn't even find one billion. Fishing. But fishing, what? We had already shown them 260 billion. That was a lake nearby. <laughs> so it was really embarrassing. So so it's, it's painful. It's really um, dishonest to our citizens. But we here tell them, no, this is wrong, this is... And then the following day, we are the same people. I, I, I just don't get it. And let me tell you something. The majority of those members of parliament are not poor people. And they, we earn quite well. We, uh, and each one of us has a vehicle, almost. I, I, well, the one of the newspapers said that many of you go home without, with nothing. Many. Uh, I, I, I want to believe whoever because doesn't have a vehicle enough. is not because of anything, it's because he chooses not. Those dates, I can... You can pay them in a few months' time. Yes, that's very true. And you can work out a schedule of payment. True. So, let's really not be so so selfish and so uncaring about the poor electors. The other issue that was mentioned is on, on the, the documents I presented over oil. You know, there has been all this uh, talk all over, all the documents are forged. One, I have never had a single person being arrested, charged or prosecuted for forging those documents. Not even one like this, not even a single suspect. Two, if they were indeed forged, and if there are false allegations against these ministers, why go to court and try to stop the investigations? It would be an opportunity to cleanse themselves. Why? For me, I think if you make funny allegations against me, I will sit back, wait for you, do your findings. Let the truth emerge. And then the truth will emerge. But for you, you know, it's like, it's like uh, the, it's, uh, you have a, a very nice cock, it disappears on, on, on the, the village, village. and uh, you, you suspect that it is in some house, in a, let's say, a a John's house. house. Yes. And then you reach John's house, he says, I have not stolen any chicken, but I cannot open my house. So they say, please open, because you've seen it. He, no, and he says, I will not open this house. So wh what are you supposed to conclude? Right. So uh, there are so many things that have been surrounding these documents. You, you saw the panic that they really caused. Forged documents don't cause panic. Not at all. Forged documents don't cause don't panic. Don't cause panic. Not at all. So you saw it. People presenting letters that were not even meant to them. The Prime Minister saw him presenting a letter that was meant for the Speaker. Not even copied to him. And the Speaker hadn't seen that letter. So, yeah. So it, it is really... Uh, uh, and let's find out. I hope that the Constitutional Court agrees with us and allows Parliament uh, to do its work independently so that they can investigate. The truth will eventually come out, I'm sure. So you censure these ministers, Ahmed wanted to know, why don't you grab their properties, houses on the hills and other things? Yeah, that's... Money in the bank. That's very, very important. Even other mattress, go on. Yes, that's very, very important. Um, with the laws we have, well, they spell out that actually, well, a judge can direct that uh, properties be recovered. And you can actually attach a person's property. Even these ministers can attach their properties. But there is no specific law, and that's why um, the APNAC members, APNAC <coughs> stands for African Parliamentarians Network Against Corruption. Yes. That's why we've already agreed that uh, we should move a private member's bill uh, entitled the Forfeiture Act. Forfeiture Act? Yeah, uh, like it is in other countries. So that right. if you are uh, caught in a corruption scandal, uh, then they can sell your house, they can sell your land to recover this money. And that would send a very strong message. Imagine you are home with your children and wife, and then you see a policeman coming to evict you and they're saying this house because you stole some public funds that would really send a strong message but some of those properties might belong to their children some of them are born babies i know a baby could own a six floor building in Kampala. i know Road. but of course again that can also be investigated uh, fraud is is, is is an offense and it is also uh, it can well i mean you could get this man and he says oh that building belongs to my child six months old that one belongs to my aunt what yeah. do you do no that's what i'm saying is that can still be recovered because again how you does draw around the man no you 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 can do further investigations and find out say how first of all you question say how did this six uh, <coughs> months old child how much all did, did he save every month <laughs> yes <laughs> probably yes every month and that is if a problem they are even able to discern in the six months so so um uh, some of these and we are going that one is going to come that uh, uh then the other act of course we recommended was the compensations act yes. because we noticed that there are, there are so many claims 
in the attorney general's chambers that are even as old as 20 years yes for the far much small amount 100 200 million, 200 million <coughs> has not been paid at all but this one comes 142 billion because spent. of the six letters yes well well i don't want to think that's the only but that is of course partly the reason well, six letters is a big number but the president said the he said he had written 10 even on other occasions and they had not respected i don't know how, whether that was maybe this well uh, did him seven he actually write them the president <laughs> The six letters. He says uh, that he wrote some and he read some. He says some he didn't read and he just put his signature. And for me, I think that was very, very uh, uh, unfortunate because for the president. Said, well, he's a busy man. You can't really let, technically read everything. Other people read for him. You, 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 you don't put a signature. What if it was, for, for instance, for him to resign? Signing our power. <laughs> yes, and uh, what would have happened? So I don't want to think you want to just put a signature when you've not gone through a letter, you know, even when you're president. Nick said uh, there's a need to clean up. He was uh, basically saying we need to repent of our sins. He says uh, all you got to support you. Seventy, the president should reinvent himself. He should suck uh, the dirt. Uh, Kabakumba Masko is still in State House. What's your comment on that? When I saw that picture, personally, I was equally shocked that she was still. Well, but her husband, what's there? What's wrong with her going to visit her husband at her, her, his workplace? This was a public function, an official public function that uh, you would have probably expected the minister to be standing there and indeed she was there still masquerading as a minister so i i keep wondering how that was the case and, not, and nobody actually came out to explain what she was doing there um probably one way or it was one. at a party function because no, she's a was, member of the nrm no no it wasn't a party function because the investors are not only for nrm they're for the government of, of uganda for the citizens of uganda so it was it was very very shocking but i hope i hope she's not still a minister otherwise that would be extremely unfortunate you don't think she's still a minister Unless, but you maybe, think she could be drawing a salary or maybe if she was reappointed because yeah. i mean she resigned so a I minister hope. in charge of fort well anyhow we have to go thank you very much to our dear guest honorable gerald karuhanga youth mp for western uganda also chairman of the Uganda chapter of the African Parliamentary Network Against Corruption and lead counsel of the Public Accounts Committee that gave us this report. Thank you for tuning in. I've been your host, Edmond Chizito. Spectrum will be back tomorrow. Up next is the news in English. Fellow Ugandans, the United Nations has declared that access to the Internet is a universal human right. Hello.